what is the name of this painting again? Breaking Storm in watercolor. And um, we're going to go step by step. And we're going to start, we started with mixing our colors. And our colors are Indian Red, Prussian Blue, and Quinacridin Gold, or Raw Sienna. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start with the, we start with the top, which is the sky, which is two thirds down. It's broken up into thirds, it looks like. Well, it looks like a little more than a third, but uh, that's okay. You can, as long as you're below the halfway mark, you don't want to divide your picture right down the middle. It's bad composition. And then what we're going to do is um, we noticed that he, he worked with ivory paper. This is pure white. So in order to leave the lights in the sky, we're going to leave a little bit of white popping through. It's always a good idea to do that. So you don't want to cover it all up. So I'm going to wet the paper first with some clear water randomly, not completely. So I'll have some white patches when I get done. Don't have to be in exactly the same spot, just in that area. So I'm using a, this is a 10 inch uh, sable brush. VR, I don't know. Okay, so we're using a 10 inch uh, sable brush. This happens to be Kalinsky. You don't really need to spend that much money to buy a brush. But uh, it's, if you look at it, you'll see from the edge, you can see that it's randomly wet. It's not completely wet. There's a lot of white dry patches right toward that area where we're gonna leave in the clouds. So before it dries, you wanna quickly have a mixture of your Indian Red. You can start with Indian Red and just, uh, it will, if you are working on the tilt like me, it will drip down by itself without much um, assistance. And I'm gonna go all the way through because it's already a mixture of the three anyway, so. And I'm gonna work from side to side crisscrossing a little bit so that I get that patch, a natural patch without a contrived patch. Does that make sense? And of course, watercolor dries 20% lighter, so you can afford to go a little bit darker than um, you would think. If it looks right, it's probably too light. So I'm just gonna, in. Almost like sketching it in, sketching in the sky. Now, if you find at this point you are too pink, you can just take a very pale wash of yellow, very pale. You don't want to overrun it with yellow, and you can add, just streak in some wet yellow into your sky, and uh, that takes care of that. Or if you were too yellow, do, do it with pink. And this was a very watery wash. It wasn't a strong wash at all. So I think that's, that's good enough for now. And then you just wanna let that dry. You could go into the water at this point. You could do the same thing. You could re-wet down here. Why don't we do that since we have the color? Might as well do it. Wet, wet basically almost right down into the, the you're just gonna cover up this wash with uh, the bushes. So you can wet right into the bushes. And then take that same color, a little bit of pink. This is Indian red that's watered down, basically. And just brushing it back and forth horizontally, leaving it fairly light through here. I'm gonna pull out with a thirsty clean brush some of that color. And then just a little bit of yellow right here, maybe a little more pink. Or Indian red and then I'm just gonna let it dry there okay all right that's the first and yeah, no, I tried to yeah okay this is the I first can't. wash done with Indian red and quinacridone in gold and this is Gail she's going she's one of the students and she's going to attempt to do this on a tilt right are you excited, Gail? Yes. And this is Linda. She's no. Oh, I'm Jane. Jane, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Why did I say Linda? Sorry, Jane. That's okay. All right, and Jane just did her, her wash, and she's feeling very confident, right? Yes. Good. Very confident. Y'all yeah, with my hand. Okay, this is Sue, and she's doing Susan, her... yeah. Susan. Mm -hmm. She's doing her wash. And how are you feeling about it? Um, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> 
you probably need to clip that to a board so that it, oh. you don't have to hold on to it like that. I'll, oh. I'll get you one. Okay. You got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so um, what was your question? If, uh, if we're not happy at home with the color, say, you know, it's too peach at home, not enough pink in it, mm -hmm. um, could we just add, say, alizarin crimson in a dot to run it through it or to the whole painting or yeah. to the whole um, Yeah, so what I would do is I'd wait till it's bone dry mm -hmm. and then you could re-wet as though you just starting all over again without any color. Rewet the same way you did before, and then just add a very light glaze of pink on top, and then let it dry again. Interesting. And then blow dry it. I, I usually wait to blow dry after it's set. If you do it before it sets, then it pushes the paint strokes around, and you lose a lot of the nuances that you get without using the blow dryer. I used to hate using the blow dryer because I didn't know that you could wait for it to set first. So um, now, does that answer your question? Okay, now we're going to go on to the second stage. And um, at this point, I guess the second stage would, you could go anywhere really, there's no rule. But the second stage for me would be going back into the sky and doing the second layer, which is probably the very light gray. You probably could do even this as well. Just make sure your brush shifts from very pale to very dark as you're moving across the picture. So I'm going to attempt to do this the, the, as closely as I can, but just know that you're not going to be able to reproduce exactly how the wash reacts because it depends on how much water is in his brush and uh, it depends on his paper. personality, yeah. his paper, everything. So you just have to be happy with what you get and try not to overwork and go back in and change to make it look just like this. We're just going to get as close as we can. So I'm gonna mix a gray, and the gray is the three colors. So you're gonna have mostly blue, which is the Prussian blue, and you're gonna have some of that Indian red in there, which is this. Not a whole lot, because Indian red goes a lot, look how it takes over if you put too much in. So it's already shifted to more of a red gray, so you're gonna to have to go back in and put a little more blue on top of that and go lightly because you can t take too much blue and go crazy. And I like to test it on a little piece of paper just to make sure I'm, I've got the right color before I go into the big, big painting. And um, so what we're gonna do, since it's bone dry, we're gonna re-wet, where are we? Hmm. I don't think I would re-wet it this time because we, got, we have some hard edges and you won't get that if you re-wet. It is soft there, but still there's a little bit of hard edge. So I'm gonna use switch to a bigger brush. I'm gonna switch to a very big brush. This is, I feel like I pulled out like the big <laughs> rifle. Um, this is a, well, I think it's an 18. Wow. Look how big that is. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> Can you get any closer? Okay, so, and then um, when you wet it, hopefully, this brush, unfortunately, doesn't have the point that I would love for it to have. Um, if I were to make this brush, I would have made it with a much sharper point, but it does the job when you want to cover large areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up with as much paint on my brush as I can. I'm going to test it here to see if it's dark enough. Yeah. And I'm just going to, with the side of the brush, I'm just going to run it across the top. And if you use the side, you'll get more of a nice ragged edge. I don't know if you saw the last video, but we did a lot of raggedy edge waves, and this is how you get a natural ragged edge. If you use the point, it's too controlled, and I think that the brush does a much better job of painting than I do, so I like to use the side of the brush. So then I'm gonna have to re-wet because it's getting dry. Just run across the whole sky. Do it quickly because once it dries, you're gonna get hard edges and uh, you're not gonna be happy. So you gotta just work fast. If you make a mistake, oh well, just move on. Okay, now I'm gonna wet my brush with some clear water. Rinse it, have a nice wet brush. I'm gonna wet this whole area right down to that edge before it dries. See how it's creating sort of a, mm -hmm. a blossom by doing that? I'm gonna do that here, I'm gonna do that here. 
And since I'm on the tilt, it's going to run down and create almost like a, hopefully, a cloud, a, a rain kind of effect. And so then, and then you can just sort of blop some, blossom some clear water there. See what, and then I'm just going to wait to see what happens. I'm not going to control it. It's going to do its own thing. It will change in the next five minutes. You'll get a lot of changing going on there. So um, here, when you're working on the tilt, you have to be careful because all these little darks are going to run back into the sky and create blossoms. In the sky, though, that can be really lovely. He didn't do that, but um, I think so. Since he didn't, I'm going to pick him up with a thirsty brush just to show you how to conquer that. Just keep squeezing the water out of your brush and then picking up the little drops. You don't want to blot because if you blot, you're going to create a cloud. So don't do any, I, I don't usually blot ever anymore. I swipe rather than blot, swiping like sh sh So I've got a few little dried edge clouds. I might have to go back into this again after it's dry and, and do another application, which will be fine because you'll get levels and that'll be nice. Probably gonna go back in after it's dry and do some of those lighter clouds, but this is a good start and so I'm gonna leave it as is. Okay? And she's doing it. Okay, so we're gonna go. Um, she makes it look no. very simple and easy. So um, obviously, compared to this, it dried mm -hmm. a lot lighter, right? Mm -hmm. You see the difference? Uh -huh. yep. And when I first put it on, it looked perfect. So right. usually, when it looks perfect, it's not dark enough. So I'm, after 35 years, I still don't seem to be able to get that through my thick head. <laughs> so, but you know, it's still better that you do it in layers. Yeah, because I like it's it. It's too dark. You can't really correct yeah. it. Yeah, true. You can't really go back. Yeah. So it's better to be ginger than uh, too heavy-handed, I guess. So I'm going to do the same thing as though I, I, would, I hadn't even done the sky. I'm just going to go back. I'm not going to cover up all my underpainting because there's you got to leave the layers. That's what creates the beauty and the depth. So um, I'm going to go over the darker areas maybe a little bit more. And I'm just using, again, the side of the brush. And this in the same color and uh, what's going to happen is and I'm not covering up all the underpainting I'm just, just going to go and let the brush skip over where it wants to kind of has its own mind and like you were asking you're you're just going to do this again because your sky is really light and it's not going to show and you'll just bring your white right back by doing this and uh, over here I'm just going to go over the whole thing again This I'm going to cover because this is the area that uh, is going to I'm going to run through with water again. Now I'm going to rinse my brush and go a little bit lighter, and maybe this time I'm going to cut I'm, with a light wash. I'm just going to go. That's even almost too dark. Maybe I'm just going to go through and do a few strokes, horizontal strokes through, just to show that there's. I'm rinsing a little bit more, so I've got a lot of color in my brush. And I'm just going to touch that again. I'm going to touch up here and let it run down again. And I don't push it. I let the watercolor do its magic. And then maybe like a little bit of disturbance there, 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 maybe there. Looks like it needs a little bit more water to help it. See if it stops, you want to add a little bit more water to help it go down further. There. And then just let it create its own channels. You don't have to help it along. Maybe one more there. Okay. Yeah, I'm just getting a little carried away. <laughs> just a little carried away. There we go. Now I'm just going to let that go. Oops. Now when that happens, you just want to quickly um, rinse your brush so you get nice clean water. And then you're just going to rub it with clean water. And then swipe it with your paper towel. That way you don't get a stripe in the middle of your painting. Okay, oops, we got one that's going to happen there if I don't take care of it. That one I'm going to leave. <laughs> Just because. Okay. Boy, that really looks like the rain coming down now. Yeah, the, the clear water made a channel. Yeah. So, uh, 
The more you do that, the easier it gets to figure out what might or might ha not happen. I'm going to use a small brush, very pale wash, just to do like a few little clouds. Just to break up that hard edge a little bit. There. Yeah, and I don't have the same exact cloud formation he has, but it's similar. Good enough. Oops, I got my little, you gotta keep on top of that. All right, so that's where I would stop. Hi, Hi. I'm Kim Weisenborn, and we're doing, we're continuing the painting of Winslow Homer's, what was Breaking it? Storm. Breaking Storm, thank you. So we're gonna, um, uh, we started with a uh, light wash of alizarin and uh, quinacridone and gold, oh. and then we did the sky after it was dry. And I'm gonna, this has been two passes. We're gonna do a third pass. So let me mix. Turn it like that so you can see. Okay. So this is the Prussian blue, Lizard Crimson. No, that's magenta. This is Lizard Crimson. And a tiny bit of gold, just to gray it down a bit. Okay, so it's dry, and I'm just going to give it a little bit more, just a little bit, more, one more bit of texture. So I'm just going to, with a dry brush, roll across this. That might even be darker than it, well, that's gonna, we'll just go with it. And I'm just with the side of the brush, sort of running across it. A little bit wetter brush as I get down here. I want to give it another little bit of a layer to it because right now it's reading kind of flat for me. So I wet the brush and wetter clouds on this side, touching the edges, leaving some of the underpainting showing through all the way down to here, softening them here too. Just wetting this area so I get a nice soft edge. And up here. Okay, we'll see what happens. See if that'll be enough. Hopefully it will. Okay, then I'm gonna do the water. And I'm mixing the Prussian blue with a little tiny bit, just a tiny bit of gold to green it up because the water does have sort of a green cast to it. And I'm going to check my color on here. That's pretty, but not quite the color I'm going for. Hmm. You know what I'm going to have to do? <laughs> I have to go in my phthalo green. Because it really is phthalo green. I don't think, I wonder if he had it back then. I just don't know. Look at that. That's it right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're going to want to do the water, you're going to have to go wet on wet. Because there is, that's wet on wet right there. There's no hard edges. And he didn't take it all the way here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to wet the water right up to the horizon line. And Sue, so you were asking about the horizon line being mm -hmm. darker. What's going to mm -hmm. happen is when you place the green at the horizon line, it's going to overlap the gray and create a natural line that you don't even have to make. Okay, here we go. Let's hope I get it the first time. No, that's too bright. So, what do we have to do, ladies? Mm-hmm. Very good. Who said that? Marianne. Marianne. 
Very good. More Add a little red. red. That's the alizarin crimson. A little alizarin crimson, yeah. What size of brush are you using, Kim? This is a 10, believe it or not. Small for you, right? It's small for you. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. I've switched to smaller. I think since I went to France. Okay, so it's not quite right. What do I need to add? What color? What color am I missing? The gold. Yes, Mary Ann, you're on the roll today. I know colors, I just don't know how to paint. I'm having trouble putting it into action. Okay, so it's really bright. Mm-hmm. So I have to go back and add red. a little bit more red. Very good. <laughs> so oh, just on this side so that I don't, um, I'm not going to go crazy. If I can't match it exactly, there's only so much you can do. So I'm just going to. Because it looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Especially I like how it looks mm -hmm. like, like how he has it darker mm -hmm. and then just Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, no, I could see. Yeah. So I'm barely touching so that it doesn't destroy what I already put down. So I'm just going to leave it like that and it's going to dry quite a bit lighter. And hopefully, um, well, we're not going to get a line there. I'm going to probably have to scrub that out so we get a nice clean line. But I've got some hard edges there that I don't want. So to avoid that, you're going to rinse your brush with clean water. And you're just going to touch it like this, right at the edge, and it'll smooth out and be a nice, soft transition. Okay. Well, um, it's sort of dry, not completely, but dry enough to continue working, and we're going to put the brush in. I'm kicking myself because I do the very thing I'm telling you all not to do is to go over it and over it and over it, and look, it's kind of dead looking right now. So. <laughs> So anyway, I'm gonna um, I'm just gonna keep going, and I'll we'll do a faster one next. Okay, so I'm gonna mix the brush color, which is if you have Indian red. I guess we were using Indian red at the time, and we were mixing it with Prussian blue. But I'm running out of Prussian, so I'm going into my Thalo green, and uh, I'll just do Thalo. I'll switch my color scheme right in the middle of my painting. Oh Lord, and. Uh, this is how we're gonna do it. Oh, it does start out as being kind of purple, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, it goes slowly to more of a Indian red. And then there's some, there's a lot going on. So it would suggest to me that Winslow mixed on the paper. And that's something that really creates a lot of variety in color when you're working on brush like this. So that's what I would recommend to you is mix on the paper, okay? Well, if it comes out wrong, we'll do another one. It didn't take that long, did it? It was worse than that. Okay, and throw a little red to make that purple color. It's going to go right across. Now, see, there's a real nice wet on wet that happened there that we're not getting because we waited for the water to dry because I'm doing this in stages. That's why when you do this really fast, you're not going to have, you're going to have a lot more accidents that are fun that are happening along the way. Because she really picked it. So, uh, here we go. If I want to soften that line, this line right here, if you want to soften that, you can just wet your brush, clean it, and then just touch the edge up here. And then, then touch the, the hard edge and it should soften up a little bit. I'll bring it up a little higher. Okay, then when you get here, you're going to use the side of the brush because it, there is like this dry feeling happening. And you're going to go with more pigment so that you get it to, to go darker. So I'm just going to throw more pigment in there mm. and a little more red. And using the side gives you that sort of rough, fun edge that he has there. Rinse my brush, go a little bit lighter in some spots. Throw in some green. Does that look 
sticks out for like Phil and me where he has it, where, you know, in the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Try to listen to myself and let things happen and see what... I'm going to get run back here. Um, I think I'm going to let it go and see what happens. Okay? Yeah. So were you leave the white spots you did that on purpose? Yeah, I did. Okay. And I can go back later and cover those if I don't like right. them. So I always leave white spots. Yeah. I just okay. can't help it. Yeah. Okay. And did you, that was dry on the bottom, not white on white. You just did dry? Dry. But then I worked kind of into Soft, the, yeah, mixed on the paper, so it became white on white looking. Okay. All right. All right, so I noticed that the land uh, in my painting is not as dark as the land in the in Winslow's painting. And if you squint, your eyes are almost closed. And compare, you'll be able to see that you need to go darker with your land. It should be the darkest thing in the painting. So I'm just going to go over it again with a with another pass of similar color. Side of my brush. Covering up those whites and leaving some underpainting popping through. I'm not going to cover it all up. And more red. As soon as I put it down, I can tell what color I'm missing, and I see that it needs to be more red. Maybe even orangish. And yeah, of course, that's, that's thalo and alizarin. This is oh. thalo, alizarin, and a little bit of quinacridone gold. Okay. That's going to do. All right, so it's going to dry a lot lighter, but wet that again just so that it does not too hard of an edge okay I think that's it for now so we're gonna do um, bird, the finish with the birds and the thing about the birds is uh, they look well we all agree that they look more like bats but we'll just say they're birds and as you look at them and they go off in the distance they are large in the foreground and then they go off and get really tiny in the background. And they also get lighter. They're not as dark as they are in the foreground. So pay attention to that as you're doing them. You don't want to have a giant bird as it's flying off in the distance and a really small one up front. It won't look right. So that will create that. So I drew, I can't really see my drawing, but I drew them very lightly on the paper. And I'm, the next thing is you have to mix a very dark dark. And you don't really want to go into your black because the black that you have in your palette may not be the right black for this painting. Black is made up of the three colors. And if you use a black that's made up of three different colors than you're using, it, will, it might look odd. It could look good, but you don't know. So if, all you, if you want to do black, you're having trouble mixing a dark, you can use the black in your palette, but throw some of the phthalo green and the alizarin crimson in the black so that it, it turns more to your color. So I'm just going to mix a black from the three colors because with um, alizarin crimson and phthalo green, you get a really nice, nice black. You can put the, the yellow in there too, just to make it less cool. But look at that black. That's just like super black. It's just the two colors? It's a alizarin crimson the phthalo green and just a tiny bit of the gold just a little bit of the yellow in there and very little water so that's how you get a nice black so i'm gonna practice a bird and the thing about the bird is it's got it's almost like a little well, what is that shape like that the m yeah. it's like little mm -hmm. m's right mm -hmm. and they come to a little point right here and uh and they, the wings thin out. So it's almost like it's fat, and then thin, fat, and then thin. So here we go. Let's see. Can't see my drawing. So I'm just, no, no, I almost, it's not you. I just can't see what I drew. 
Okay, there's one. Here's another one, his little friend. Am I too close? No, you're fine. And so I'm using a smaller brush. I'm not using, this is where you, your, a small brush is really good to use. Okay, now they should start getting a little smaller and a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna rinse my brush just a little bit, put some water in it and dab it on the paper towel to lighten it. Hopefully it'll lighten a little bit. If not, I might have to do that a few times. It'll, I think it'll dry light because there's a lot of water. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Oops, he's in the wrong spot. Well, we'll just have to wing it. It's getting smaller. And maybe one over here. So I'm not doing it exactly like he did it. I just had to change according to the... They're all kind of going in the same direction. That's not good. Oh, maybe we'll make one do like oh, the leader. little guy doing this way. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and now if they're all the same darkness, you can just take your paper towel Sorry, <laughs> and you can blot them a little bit so you take some of the darkness out of those guys.